people who discovered their partner was living a double life or keeping a significant magnitude secret. In retrospect what signs did you perhaps miss or what event now make more sense? The fact that these insane arguments would spark from nothing and he would end up stripping naked randomly and or punching things. Drugs. I was that oblivious. I don't think you were oblivious. You were trying to make sense of someone's nonsensical behavior. You did your best. I was seeing this girl. We met at work. And hit it off pretty quickly. Things were pretty normal. We'd go out. Come back to my place. Do our thing and then sometimes she'd stay or other times she'd head home. This went on for about a year, so when things started to get weird was when we went out to a bar. Both got s faced, and I said well your place is like a few miles down the road, let's just crash there. She was adamant about getting a cab back to my place. Seemed a little weird but whatever. Yay drunk sex. So this happened a few more times, she'd always have excuses. Her place was a mess. She was painting, etc. At this point it's not adding up. So one night I decide to surprise her at home, figuring she would be happy to split a pizza and a six pack. She's not home, but her fiancé is. Turns out he's a pretty cool guy, has suspected something is going on with her, says she's been staying late at work a lot lately, including tonight. No she isn't. So we decide to split the pizza, watch the baseball game and wait for her. I will never forget the look of oh I'm fricked on her face when she strolled through the door and saw her fiancé and her boyfriend sitting on the couch eating pizza and drinking beer. TLDR. If stupid things don't add up, it's usually for a good reason. It's pretty dope that he was that cool about it though. A lot of people blame the other side because they want to believe that their beloved isn't a bad person. They were seduced beyond their control etc. Freaking heck human beings are garbage though this whole thread has just taken me down a notch ha ha. He pretended to have combat induced PTSD that he used as an excuse for his crappy behavior. It turned out he was never in combat, but he talked about it every day, all the time to everyone. It's usually just when the lies don't add up. Dates and names change and there are obvious things that you choose to ignore. He told me he talked to his dad about it all the time. But when I went to meet his parents he said that they don't know anything about it so don't bring it up. From my limited experience with service members, the ones who do a lot of talking didn't do much in the service. People with PTSD generally don't like to regularly relive combat with strangers. And they certainly don't brag about having PTSD. I caught my boss cheating on his wife. We ran a really small screen printing operation and it all started with these business trips. The first few times it was just a week or two. Then over the span of a year the trips would become longer and longer and more frequent. I ran the business when he left. He wouldn't answer customer calls while he was there and never brought back any new clients. So I started to get suspicious. One day he slipped up and sent an email to our work inbox that I use daily to correspond with customers. It was a receipt for a flight to New York for him and another woman. On his wedding anniversary. He never even called his wife that day. Now at this point I was not interested in outing him or meddling but I was the only one that talked to him daily. I loved his wife and when she came to me asking if I heard from him because he didn't call her on their 23rd wedding anniversary and didn't know where he was. I may have mentioned that he was in New York and maybe that was why he didn't call. But she asked how I knew that and I told her there was an email in our work inbox. I absolutely do feel guilty about being the one to lead her to finding out the truth but it ended up being what he wanted anyway. He didn't have the balls to tell her what was going on and wanted to get caught. They split and he now lives with the other woman. His ex-wife is happier than she has ever been considering the wake of balls he left her to deal with. Don't feel guilty. He put himself in that position 100%. And since his ex-wife is happy, then you know for sure you did the right thing. My dude had to go home and help with his ailing stepdad on the weekends. Initially, I was apprehensive because they had a rocky past, but was convinced because family is family, right? So it must be true. He'd leave the city Friday afternoon, return Monday night. It was a 3 hour drive out to the middle of the nowhere and was almost a decade ago when cell service wasn't that great, and I worked overnights at a hospital. It worked out. This went on for a year and a half before I broke up with him. You see, things weren't adding up, 
I wasn't allowed to talk to his mom or sis anymore. We were growing distant. He'd get very agitated with me. Also, I was never invited to go with him. I mean I could have asked for time off. Therefore, I hired a pie. Turned out he'd hop a ferry to Canada and visit some other woman. I wound up contacting the other woman after I kicked him out. She and I exchanged some info, filling in a lot of the missing pieces for both of us. She was pee she was bamboozled and broke up with him too. Through some friends. I received news a year later that his stepfather died. But this guy never visited and had actually become estranged from the family. And they didn't know where he even was. About a year later he contacted me and told me he had lung cancer and wanted to be my friend again. This wasn't reciprocated. Partially because his lung cancer info never added up. I'm in the medical field. You can't fool me man. But mostly because I didn't trust him. So why bother? I told him to pound sand. This escalated his illness and said he had now suffered a concussion due to a bicycle accident. Keep in mind this was all via text and a few phone calls. We did not live around one another. When I still would not spend time with him. He wanted to watch Netflix over Skype or play video games. He said a former lover proposed marriage and he was leaving the country to be with marry her. It's been over a year since I've heard from him, but fully expects something in a few months because he does this cyclical pattern when he contacts me. Okay guy. I hope you find someone not him. Not my partner, but my boss, married mother of two, was always taking long lunches, forgetting things, dressing particularly nicely for normal days, seeming a little tipsy after lunch. Once, a friend mentioned the neighborhood she'd moved into appeared to have a big swingers vibe, and my boss laughed out loud but went back to her work, saying nothing. We'd make jokes she was having an affair but I don't think anyone believed it. She was a proper southern lady, dedicated to her family, or so we thought. After she passed away, RIP, they found a highly detailed sex log that specified huge numbers of guys and a liaison almost every day except the week she and her family took their annual vacation. She used code for the guy, the hotel, and details like 2 O's, comma or boring, or likes oral E. Not me, but my ex-girlfriend in high school. Her father was a businessman who would travel back to their home country a lot for work. Apparently around the start of high school he'd started traveling back home for work a lot more for longer durations. Around the time we were in senior year, it came out that he had a secret family back home. Wife and two kids, oldest one was maybe three or four which sparked the move I think. And he was planning to move back their home country to live with them instead. I remember it all because she called me the night this all happened. About two years after we broke up. Still friends. And she was pretty devastated. They noticed the following suspicious things. 1. His trips were less well planned. And seemed spur of the moment. 2. Despite traveling for much longer he was still packing light. 3. He would call back home a lot less when he was traveling. How some people can afford two families, not only financially but also emotionally, energy wise, time wise etc. I'll never understand. I found the hidden H habit when I found him not breathing in the bathroom and the paramedics that came asked me if he's taken anything. I didn't know H enemas existed. Paramedics unable to revive him and every year I think about what could have been. Man, I'm sorry you went through that. I've found people in similar situations. I was with a guy for about 6 months who would get really awkward when this one friend of his would call. He'd clench up when I'd ask about her and we'd always end up in a fight. Obviously, he turned it around and said I was insecure and jealous. He broke up with me pretty abruptly and didn't give me much of a reason. Turns out I was the mistress and she was the girlfriend. They're getting married this year. I just found out 12 days ago that a guy I have been seeing for the past 14 months is getting married soon. So, yes, ouch, hang in there. A very good friend of mine. She dated a guy who claimed to work in quality control for a nationwide bakery chain. So traveling a lot was reasonable. They were together for 3 years living together for one. And she knew he had an ex-wife with 2 children in another city. So he had to pay for them. If she became pregnant. And shortly before birth she discovered the ex-wife was pregnant too. But she lived in the same city. And they were not separated at all obviously. He also had a completely different job. In town. Without traveling. Throw away because this is a distinctive story. 
So my dad's best friend lives in a city a few states over and they call each other pretty regularly. They've been friends since the 80s. One day his friend calls him kinda annoyed and says he saw a guy that looked just like him the other day in the city. And if my dad was visiting, why not come over and say hi? My dad says no. I was never in that city. I'm sat at home right now in buttfuck nowhere. My glorious hometown. His friend says ha. Ah, well this guy looked just like you. He could have been your brother. Fast forward a few years and my dad is chatting with his dad. My grandpa. Who is a World War 2 vet and generally a pretty keeps to himself kinda guy. They were talking about how growing up. They didn't have two beans to rub together and my dad was always admiring his friend's fancy houses when he went there after school. As an adult he realized something literally didn't add up because my grandpa had a very well paid job as an executive and made a decent salary. So out of the blue his dad sits him down and says son, there's something you should know. The reason we were so poor when you were growing up was because before the war, I married in a bit of a rush to a lady in the city because she was expecting. And we had three kids. And when I got back from the war things didn't work out and we got a divorce. In those days a divorce was pretty unusual and seen as shameful. So it was a totally clean break. And he had no contact with the family ever again except for paying regular child support for each of his three kids. Meanwhile he met my grandma and had three kids with her. And hence, the lack of beans. Suddenly my dad realizes that this doesn't just explain why they were so poor. It also explains the weird phone call from his friend. The guy his friend saw probably was his actual brother. My grandpa kept quiet about this for almost 40 years. Not a word to anyone. TL. DR. Dad's friend sees guy who looks like him in his city. Turns out to be his long lost secret half brother. I dated a guy in university who told me pretty much right away that he had terminal cancer and had about a year to live. I really liked him so I decided that I would stay with him and support him through it. He never wanted to talk about it and when I tried to check in with him he'd go quiet and change the subject. He told me that I was the only person who knew about it and that I wasn't allowed to talk about it with anyone else. Well we ended up dating for 3 years, and I never once witnessed a doctor's appointment or any type of symptom, and I was still the only person who apparently knew. He became incredibly emotionally manipulative and abusive, tried to isolate me from friends and family, and eventually became physically abusive. Of course, whenever I would try to leave he'd use his condition to play on my emotions, and navit, to get me to stay. He'd also physically block the door, pin me down, and do whatever he could to prevent me from physically leaving. I'll never forget the day I told him that he was such a good person with a good heart, something to do with how he was handling an issue with his alcoholic mother, and he mumbled no, I'm really not. I thought then that he was being humble, but looking back on it, it was probably guilt. I've built a happy and successful life for myself now and have a wonderfully loving and supportive partner, but it still makes me full body cringe to think of how I spent so much time with what I consider to be pure evil. I'm glad you're doing better now. My wife went through a rage addiction for a good chunk of time. When she finally came clean to me I was blown away. I had been spending so much time at work I guess I was never around to catch how off she would have been behaving. I felt like such a post for not noticing. It was one of those things where I was only seeing her for a few hours before bed each night. I looked back and realized that there were signs and that I had just been too stupid to think much of them. She was shaking when she went to bed. She would say her allergies were making her body itchy. She was also taking out a lot of cash from our account. At the time I figured she just liked spending in cash. She was picking at her face a lot leaving behind little marks all over. I just thought she was having a bad time dealing with acne. Those are just a few examples. I guess I should have also known it was weird that she would meet up with a friend every other night for about an hour. But constantly accused me of cheating or wanting to cheat or trying to cheat. If I went to the bathroom and didn't answer the phone I was cheating. If I crossed the street to check out a store when I told him I was only going out for groceries I was cheating. When I had a conversation with a mutual friend in front of him we were secretly fricking each other. When I was pregnant with his child I was going to cheat. The doctor who delivered my baby had to be a woman because a man would be looking at my vagina and I would probably cheat. I am not exaggerating or joking in this last one or any of the previous ones. 
I stayed with him because I didn't know what normal was. My mom's a narcissist and my childhood was emotional heck. Family is everything and all that crap. I just didn't know to run. Fast and far away a long time ago. We split. Of course he himself was a cheater. Growing up we thought my dad had 4 kids, us, with our mom. Turns out he had family's mistresses on the side and had 13 kids total. Biggest giveaway was that there was a 30 year age difference between my mom and dad and he swooped in and married her on her 18th birthday soon after she got out of catholic school. I'm almost 50 now with 2 kids and I'm still younger than he was when he married my then 18 yo mom. He was almost 60 when I was born. With us he acted extremely prejudiced against a particular race, yet he had several children of that race. We found out late in life, when they came on a lifelong quest to meet their bio dad. Imagine spending so much time and effort to find your biological father, only to learn he's a scumbag. When he was younger he beat his sister so badly he put her in hospital. She was always rude to him at family gatherings and he would never react. He would never be part of family conversations. We would all sit around the dinner table chatting and joking after dinner but once he had finished eating he would move over to the lounge and sit there alone. He would rarely talk about his past. He did the same to his ex-wife. Not to the point of putting her into hospital but he did enough and often enough for her to leave him. I found out about these things from some of his family after I left him because of, guess what, domestic violence. I felt so betrayed and heard that no one, who I thought had become my family too had the decency to warn me about him when I was with him. Not his parents, his sister or any of his extended family. I have kids with this guy now. I have a lifetime ahead of problems. So yep, his withdrawal from family social interactions even when present in the absence of stories from his past were big red flags. Please people, don't protect the guilty. A friend found out that his dad was in the special forces after years believing he sold paper products abroad. He eventually discovered the truth after seeing his dad on a live leak video receiving a blood transfusion after being shot. When he confronted him, his dad had said oh yay, that, the paper industry can be very competitive. She slowly and then completely stopped being social or doing anything outside of the house that she usually enjoyed. It always seemed like she really wanted to go meet people, hang out, but then didn't feel up for it, or had work to do etc. I thought perhaps she was starting to get depressed. I would ask and keep an eye out but she seemed fine otherwise. I honestly stumbled across browser history of gay male p. And though huh, that's a little strange but I guess a lot of guys enjoy watching lesbian p never thought of it again. A few months after that I get a series of cryptic text messages while I am at the airport traveling for work. I am confused and am not sure what is going on. But once on the plane and a couple of hours into my airplane mode flight I start to realize. Wait, is my wife of 6 years transgender? Yes. After my work trip I came home to her husband. In hindsight the sudden reclusiveness was because they didn't want to meet new people as they were then. She wanted to meet new people as a man, not a woman. Husband was cheating. I knew something was wrong, but I never imagined that. He always had his phone, it was never out of his sight. When he came home from work he would be sitting in the driveway on his cell phone for a while before coming in. Sex started getting sparse. So men are little things that I never even worried about, because I thought A were normal marriage ups and downs, became huge aha moments after I connected all the dots. I still hate to see anyone who can't let their cell phone out of their sight or gets mad if they're so picks it up. It makes me immediately suspicious. Good luck, I'm sure you're asking for a reason. Not a partner, but my husband's mom has been lying to us for years. She's had been having some financial troubles and moving a lot and made it seem like bad luck. Turns out she just doesn't pay her bills and has been evicted from everywhere that she's lived in the last few years. In the last couple of years she has been pretending to have cancer. I'm a critical care nurse and it took me until I went to her class to get certified in chemo administration to wake up and realize she was lying about having cancer. The signs we missed. She was moving all of the time for really silly reasons like her landlord sprung a rent increase on her or she wanted more animals than her current lease allowed. 
bad things were always happening to her that impacted her ability to pay her bills like her boss screwing her over, getting robbed, and getting cancer. All of her health scares correlate with some big event in her children's lives like our engagement, her daughter moving across the country, her son getting married, etc. She texts us instead of calling to update us on big news related to her health. I hope she isn't a complete narcissist, but you may find some comfort over it are just normal. Just trust your guts. When you found that your girlfriend sent a photo of her in underwear, a one you haven't got yourself, confronted her and she said that because she has taken some weight, not much. She has confidence issue and that guy she sent the photo to is boosting her confidence because he is nice. Yeah she's cheating on you with that guy or is planning to. No you don't want to give her a chance. It's only gonna be worse. Been there. Was newly married and the now ex was having a thing with a co-worker. Ex was saying to me I should spend more time with my friends and playing video games as I don't get to do this enough. In reality she was wanting me out of the flat more. We shared with one other person. As she was sleeping with the upstairs neighbor and didn't have the heart to break up with me. I found out when my gaming night got cancelled one night after uni and I walked in on both of them in bed together. Should have connected the dots when my other neighbors were making comments about him going out a lot in the evenings and when she went from wanting to spending lots of time with me to wanting me to spend time with other friends. I hate that B, but I am happy now. Not me, but a family I used to work for and have known for a few years. Dad always worked overseas, often only coming home at Christmas. Even then he would only stay for a few nights and would be quite quiet and keep to himself. I'd worked for this family for some time and only met the dad three-ish times. Mum put it down on the dad needing to provide as she looked after one of their sons with learning disabilities and worked part-time. Apparently the guy had another whole family going in a different country. Wife. Few kids. I was shocked to find out but not completely surprised. If he only came home at Christmas, that family was the other family. I've told this story before in a similar thread, but I'll rewrite it. I was 6 years old when my grandfather died. He was a great man. He owned and operated his own scrapyard and provided abundantly for my family when they came up from Mexico. However, he was apparently a bit of a player. The day of his funeral, there was about 3x the expected turnout. And if you know anything about Hispanic families, that viewing room was packed to the brim of people. A priest took the stand and began his eulogy, and at the end asked for all of grandfather's children to stand up. Yikes. In addition to my three uncles and four aunts, at least a dozen people arose from their seats, and soon low gusps and whispers started to flood the room. My grandfather had at least two other families we did not know about until the day of his funeral. There wasn't really any drama as a result. In fact, the entire family is actually closer. Our family gatherings are just much bigger now. TL. DR. Grandfather had two other families we did not know about until the day of his funeral. Awkwardness ensued. My dad got into another relationship while my mom was sick. Later died. He would travel a lot which he already did because of work. My sister found out by accidentally seeing emails and text messages while using my dad's computer for school work. It was impossible to know if she didn't come across them because he didn't really travel more than he used to. Unless this relationship started a lot earlier than we know. My dad and this new woman made it official about a year after my mom's death. He still doesn't know I know about their relationship being a thing while my mom was still alive. I didn't miss a thing. I overlooked the things that I didn't want to be true. Beware of gaslighting. OP. Good luck to you. That was me. I knew what was happening but did not know what was happening. It was like my mind refused to connect the dots. I still cringe when I think how naive I must have seemed. Hope I'm not too late. His lifestyle was a bit lavish for him constantly referring to himself as a ditch digger. His parents owned a construction company and he worked for them. He drank heavily, anywhere from a pint of Captain Morgan a night to two fifths on Sunday fun day. He would blow through money like it was, well, Monopoly money and it was the first round of the game. Bye bye bye. We once went shopping for an upcoming camping trip, went into Gander Mountain for propane, and he saw an LED flashlight in a checkout bin. 
tossed it on the counter. Getting ready to pay, I do a double take when the clerk says it's over $100. That stupid flashlight was 79 bucks, and he shrugged. I put it back. We dated for 2 years, and I never met anyone in his family besides his cousin who lived in a different state. We stayed with her before when we went on a cruise once, and flew down on a whim the second time to go to Universal. He broke his hand during a stupid argument, then his leg while riding his Ducati drunk with a broken hand two weeks later. I rushed to the hospital where he was sedated, and finally met his mother. She hated me, because, I already had a child. She didn't want a son with a predisposed family. I was warned to get the frick away from him, and that she already had a fiancé waiting in the wings to nurse him back to health. Well frick that be. I found out that she was paying every, single, one, of, his, bills. She did everything. From paying his cell to his insurance to his house payment. Everything he told me about being independent was a huge lie. He drank his paycheck every week, bought stupid crap like $80 flashlights, yet told me I was a horrible person for smoking weed. I left him with his broken leg, drunk and in bed one night, after I realized he'd only proposed to me in secret and his parents didn't know. They told him they'd disown him and stop paying his bills if he married me. So he told me we could date in secret but he had to get a decoy in the meantime. If that was okay, I found out a week later from two separate friends that he was out drinking with a girl same girl the only other guy to cheat on me was freaking years ago. I asked her if she wanted the other half of my sandwich, since she obviously loves my leftovers. At frick you Frank. I really loved you, you idiot. Dang. I'm sorry you went through this. Frick that guy. My estranged aunt went to work in Japan and met a nice, soft-spoken, old Japanese man, let's call him Ichiro, who was very nice and loving towards my aunt. Ichiro gave my aunt a home in Japan, supported her financially, etc. Ichiro was not rich but he was receiving pension which my aunt took advantage of. She would demean, insult, belittle, verbally and physically abuse Ichiro in front of everybody, even in public. I have spent many times with him when he would visit and my only memories of Ichiro were him being shouted by my aunt like a little kid and him bowing his head in a corner. My aunt would even brag about abusing him so she would be able to control him and his finances. Many years into the relationship, my aunt went on a vacation in the Philippines and met a nice, young, Filipino guy who she thought was rich. He got my aunt pregnant but she got tired of him right away because he lost his previous job and his new job wasn't as high paying. So what my aunt did was she went back to Japan and tricked Ichiro into believing the baby was his. Ichiro's parents were dead, no siblings, all relatives were living far away. So when he learned he was finally having a child, he was very happy. My aunt used the baby to get even more money for Michiro. Aside from the money she's receiving from the Japanese government from having a Japanese child who wasn't even Japanese after all. There was little to no money left with Ichiro so my aunt left him by himself and rented a house far away so she can meet younger, richer Japanese guys. Although she let him visit the child, it was torture for Ichiro to be away from them. A few years back, my aunt took the child to the Philippines to visit. One night, Ichiro video called. He was very, very happy because he had saved enough to buy a new laptop to contact them with and keep him occupied. That was the last they heard of him. A month went by. My aunt received a call that Ichiro was found dead. Heart attack. If I remember correctly, he's been dead for weeks and the landlord only discovered him when he was collecting rent. He was buried by the Japanese government because no relatives were able to come. When I heard about it, I cried in silence. Ichiro was abused and deceived and spent his last years alone. He went to the grave believing he had a child. I say a little prayer for him every now and then to honor him. My goodness, how horrible. My heart bleeds for this man and for you to have witnessed all of it. My ex-spouse came out to me as transgender not too long after we married. Before that, he would easily get upset over minor things, sometimes things that couldn't be avoided. He would be upset with me and would almost shut down. It got to the point where it was seriously affecting our relationship. Then one evening I remember this vividly he told me he had something to tell me. He always wanted to wear women's clothing. He always felt feminine. He identified as a woman. 
At first I was confused and took this to mean that he wanted to wear women's clothing at home, which wasn't a problem for me. It took him explaining to me what he really meant, that he wanted to transition into a woman. He had been keeping this from everyone for so long, and had been in denial for even longer. The signs were there, but subtle. All the stress that comes with denial and fear had to come out somehow, and it was directed to me. However, I understand that it wasn't on purpose. I was the only person there for him at the time. We tend to vent more comfortably with those who we are closest with. After all, we stayed together throughout the transition and tried to make our marriage work. It was a journey full of good moments, fear, tears, and struggle. In the end we decided to throw in the towel after a good, earnest fight. We are divorced, as is common when a relationship goes through a transition. She appears to be happily remarried from what I'm told. I have moved on myself and am happy, as well. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.